Welcome to CUTV. I'm joined today by the former Prime Minister of Australia and leader of the Labour Party, Kevin Wood. Thank you for joining us. Good to be here in Cambridge. You recently wrote an article on the 10th anniversary of being elected as Australia's Prime Minister about your 10 achievements in office. Why did you think it was necessary to do so? And um, would it have been better to let your achievements stand for themselves? Uh, not at all in the 21st century, where um, you've got, uh, in Australia at least, uh, the uh, Murdoch media wishing to chop into little pieces anyone from the progressive centre left of politics. You've to go, got to go out there and argue precisely what you've achieved, why you've achieved it, and why it actually creates a legacy uh, for the many rather than just the few. Otherwise, uh, when you have 75% of the print media in Australia owned by the Murdoch media, who run a hard right agenda, both in Australia, the United Kingdom, and the United States, they're not going to print it. So that's why you actually have to consolidate the record yourself and then go out there and argue it. You were, of course, Prime Minister of Australia, of Australia on two separate occasions during what was quite a chaotic period where, in fact, Australia went through five Prime Ministers in six years. Do you regret any of the sort of uncertainty and instability that the infighting of the Labour Party put on Australia during that period? I think the bottom line is, when you speak about uncertainty, the greatest uncertainty delivered to Australian politics in this period uh, was uh, through the global financial crisis. It disrupted politics in this country, it disrupted politics in the United States, it disrupted politics in practically every other Western democracy. And there's a reason for that. It was the biggest single collapsing market since 1929. Uh, and we were at the policy threshold of seeing the great global recession turn into the second depression. Now, that has an existential effect on the political process because people worry about survival. Secondly, in terms of the Australian Labour Party, uh, ain't my fault if a, uh, a bunch of uh, factional thugs uh, from elements of the Australian Labour Party decide to use that period as an opportunity to simply gain ascendancy temporarily within the party. The reason why the Australian Labour Party then came back to me to serve again as Prime Minister is to save the furniture in the 2013 election, which we did. You were the first Australian Prime Minister to come out in support of same-sex marriage, so no doubt you'll be pleased with the results of the recent Good outcome. Yes. What do you think this means in terms of Australia going into 2018 with legislation hopefully put through by Christmas in terms of its future? Well, the bottom line is uh, you've got more than 80% uh, of the Australian public voting in a voluntary uh, postal ballot, effectively. Uh, you have a 60% vote uh, in favour of changing the law in support of marriage equality. Uh, so I think it's just Australia kind of catching up with the rest of the Western world. Uh, and it's the end of the classical conservative political demonology of people who are A, gay, B, and same-sex relationships, or C, dissent from the conservative mainstream. So I think it's a good development. But there are other broader challenges facing the Australian polity uh, in terms of how do we carve out a future for Australians who are not benefiting, uh, from uh, neoliberal globalisation, what we can do to improve that. How do we actually put our best foot forward on further climate change action, uh, which the current Conservative government is walking backwards on? These are the challenges we now face. Finally, I just want to get your thoughts on Brexit and the Australian Trade Minister Stephen Trevor's criticism of the UK's post Brexit trade deal. Do you think it's right that? non-European countries such as Australia should be uh, commenting on and trying to influence negotiations with the European Union at what is still a relatively early stage? Well, I think the bottom line is uh, the Brexit decision by uh, Britain is done, 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 done. I mean, people seem to think that Australia is a country which historically had a much stronger trade relationship with the United Kingdom prior to uh, Britain decided to enter the European Union in the 1970s. And that Australia is somehow therefore standing in the, in the streets of applauding, waiting for Britain to come home. That's just nonsense. Australians are deeply pro-British, but we actually think it's a dumb decision that you've made uh, to leave uh, the European Union because your future lies in Europe. 
and you told us in the 1970s our future lay in Asia. And we took that seriously, and frankly, that's what we've done. So in terms of what new opportunities add up, they're not going to be huge, they're going to be small. Uh, but I think then you're into a negotiation about how you maximise Britain's interests, how you maximise Australian interests. I'm a global free trader, even though I'm a social democrat, because I think free trade lifts all boats. And so my encouragement to the British government would be to engage in maximum free trade engagement with other economies around the world, including us. And of course that includes agriculture. Kevin Root, thank you so much. Good to be with you.